Now, Goshen is an EV battery maker that was planning a $2.4 billion investment in a Michigan factory, and they were going to get some money from the U.S. government. They've been accused of dishonesty from Republican lawmakers. We want foreign investment because it creates good jobs for American workers, right? They're objecting to the fact that the Chinese government has a financial stake in these companies. But here was an issue. They wanted to put the plant right next to Michigan's Air National Guard base and a cybersecurity center. Hi, I'm David with EV World News. I'm in studio today with our founder and chief editor, Bill Moore. How's it going today, Bill? Oh, good morning, good morning, good morning. Let's start out with the topic of Goshen. Now, Goshen is an EV battery maker that was planning a $2.4 billion investment in a Michigan factory. And they were going to get some money from the U.S. government. What was it, $175 million maybe? Yeah, 175 somewhere in that area, yeah. Yeah. And so they've been accused of dishonesty from Republican lawmakers, called for an investigation to halt the company's $2.4 billion factory project in Michigan. And ginned up a bunch of local protesters while they were at it. The chair of the House Select Committee in China told the South China Morning Post that while it's no surprise the Chinese Communist Party is aiding and abetting Goshen, Goshen's consistent deception regarding its ties to the CCP is inexcusable. The thing is, China's not a free market society like the United States. It's really funny because really their version of communism is essentially kind of what national socialism is. I, I, I've kind of thought of them if yeah. you really were looking at a company that had a national socialistic type background. China really has it. Which, by the way, was the German equivalent of Nazi. Right, right. That's where the term Nazi comes from. But Anyways, the government is a huge owner in almost every industry, yep. okay? So in the United States, we have BlackRock that own, is a, the big owner. In China, they have China. Yeah, well, the thing, you know, that they're objecting to the fact that the Chinese government has a financial stake in these companies, forgetting the fact that, guess what? In a way, so does the U.S. government, right? Yes. We gave that money to Elon Musk and to uh, GM and to Chrysler and things with the stipulation that you would pay us back. And I don't know if they charged interest on any of that money or not, but, uh, you know, we we, we do that. Uh, and, you know, if you're going to loan these businesses all this amount of money and, and boy, talk, you know, we, we could go on for hours on the corruption in the Chinese business and government sector, right? But still, you know, if you're a responsible government official, you're going to keep some tabs on how that money is spent, right? Right. So I, I, I don't know if that's entirely a genuine concern just because the Chinese, com I mean, I don't have any love for the Chinese Communist Party. I think it's a crock. But other than that, they have to be responsible to some degree to the people, right? Right, right. No, I, I get that. I, I get that. And I, I do think, you know, I, I don't. I'm assuming the CCP is incredibly corrupt, but that being said, uh, before we came on live, I was talking about one of my friends and what he experienced as a Chinese businessman and why he can't go back. They, they certainly do look out for the needs of their citizens, you know, kind of in the best way they can. Doesn't mean it's it works great. Every government has this level as a certain level of corruption. In the United States, it's a little bit easier for us to call it out because we scrutinize our leaders. We can scrutinize them without generally being arrested or disappeared in the middle of the night. Yeah. So here's a couple of little interesting tidbits. So Goshen is a publicly traded multinational company, and Volkswagen is the majority shareholder in Goshen. Yeah. That, yeah. That's what I thought was interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's vice president of North American manufacturing, Chuck Thelen did not respond to requests. They have repeatedly dismissed allegations of Chinese Communist Party influence as a big fear sandwich. So the, the thing is, I don't see a problem in the Chinese investing in projects in the United States. Now, there are some exceptions. And I want to bring up, like, I used to live in North Dakota and the Grand Forks Air Force Base, which has nuclear bombers and it, can, people are deployed there 
that then work in western North Dakota on the missile silos and communicate back and forth. And Grand Forks also controls a lot of drones. A lot of the drones flown all over the world are flown from Grand Forks, okay? And the Chinese government bought a whole bunch of farmland right around the base. Yeah. And they've had a real problem with this and taken action against this in North Dakota. Yeah, I, I have issues with stuff like that. But when I see, you know, BYD already makes buses in the United States, right? I, I could totally see BYD coming and opening a manufacturing facility. There's another, we talked about um, another Chinese bus maker, Windrose, making semi trucks over in Georgia. And of course, now Hyundai is a, a Korean company, but they're building in Georgia. We want foreign investment because it creates good jobs for American workers, right? And it keeps those dollars circulating in our economy rather than being filtered out into, you know, an Asian economy somewhere. So I don't see this whole effort to put batteries there as some big spy operation for the Chinese government. So this may be a little overblown. Yep. But here was an issue. They wanted to put the plant right next to Michigan's Air National Guard base and a cybersecurity center. Perhaps they don't locate it there. Maybe they make a move five miles further west. I, You know, I, I, I'm just saying it, it's a battery facility. I, I'm not sure what is uh, going on there. You know, it obviously, I don't think... They're not like this. This is not like the Silk Road where or they bring in thousands of Chinese workers to work on the project. I'm assuming these will be local people that are hired and work there. And probably most of the upper level management will be, you know, there may be some, you know, obviously you'd want some oversight if it's, you know, you own the company and you're Chinese. But uh, I, I would think that they would uh, want. So they would want to make. As, as nice a transition and, and work as comfortably with the local community as possible. Um, so I don't know, you know, is this, you got this, is the guy's concerns about, uh, you know, Chinese eavesdropping or spying or, you know, infiltrating the local community, is that a legitimate concern or is he just pushing back against, uh, you know, the agenda of the, uh, the Biden-Harris administration push towards electric cars? I mean, could be a little of both. Hi, I'm David with EV World News. If you like this video, then please press the like button. If you like the content and would like to see more videos on electric vehicles, then please hit the subscribe button. If you have some feedback for us, please let us know in the comments. Have a great day.